In this lesson, we are going to learn how to draw absolute value equations. For example, we're going to learn to draw things that look like that, for example. But before we begin with that, I need to make sure that you can remember how to draw a basic straight line using the y-intercept gradient method that I showed you in a previous chapter. Remember the chapter where we looked at how to draw straight lines? In one of those lessons, we spoke about a method called the gradient y-intercept method. Now let me remind you, let's say they give you a straight line as y equals to 2 over 3x minus 4. So this is not an absolute value. We are going to get to that in the next slides. I do promise that. But I just need to remind you something very important. Can you remember how we used to draw this? Well, there's different methods. There's the x-intercept, y-intercept method. But one of the easier methods that I see a lot of teachers are using and a lot of learners absolutely love it is this gradient y-intercept method. So what you do is you take this value here, which is called the y-intercept, and that's negative 4. So you go to your y-axis, which is this one over here, and you put a little dot at the negative 4. Then what you do is you look at the slope. And we know what slope stands for. Slope stands for, well, we can think of the top number as the rise. So that's how much it goes up or down. And the bottom number is what we some teachers like to call the run, which is when you go left and right. So what we, and, and we spent a whole lesson on this type of stuff. So what we can do here is we have, uh, we know that the rise is two. So we go two up, one, two, and then the run is three. So we go three to the right, one, two, three. And then we put our little dot and then we connect those two dots. And that is how we used to draw a straight line. Let me give you a few more examples. What if we have negative three over two x plus two? So now what that means is that the y-intercept is two. So we put a little dot over there. Now we've got to be careful. The rise is minus three. So it means we go three down, one, two, three, and then we go two to the right, one, two. And we put a little dot over there. And then we connect them like that. Let's just do two more examples just to make sure because it's really gonna make your absolute value uh, understanding so much better. So let's say we have minus one over four x minus one. So the y-intercept is minus one, so we fill that in over there. Then if we look at the rise over the run, we can see that the rise is minus one, so we go one down, and then the run is four, so it's four to the right, so we go one, two, three, four, and then we put our little dot over there, and then you would connect them like that. And let's just do one more, and then we'll move on to absolute value. Let's say the, um, well, let's actually make this a three. So some students get confused when there's just a three, because they think, hey, where's the rise and where's the run? So remember, just say three over one because three over one is the same as three. So that means your three is your rise and your one is your run. So we start by putting the y-intercept value, which is at positive two. Then the rise is three, so we go one, two, three. And then the run is one, so we go one to the right. So that would be over here. And so then you connect them like that. Okay, so that's the basics of drawing straight lines, but now we need to move on to the real good stuff. So before we get into the real interesting type of absolute value graphs, which we're going to be doing on the next slides, I'll just show you uh, the next slide. You see, we're going to be doing some really interesting equations, but I need to show you the basics first. So the most basic absolute value equation you could ever imagine would be that, where it's just um, obviously, it's got the absolute value symbols, and then there's just an x. Of course, it gets more advanced later. We start adding some numbers, but I'll, we'll get to that, okay? We'll get to that just now, or a uh, um, little bit later in this lesson, but let's quickly talk about this basic one. So, absolute value equations, they always have a v, so the graph always makes a V. Either it's gonna be upwards like that or it's gonna be downwards, but I wanna show you how that actually happens. So check this out. Let's just choose some X values. So let's say X is equal to one, okay? So if X is equal to one, then go plug this on your calculator. Or you might even know it out of your head. What is the absolute value of one? It's just gonna be one, right? So that means the Y value, 
will be the absolute value of 1, which is just going to be 1. So x is 1, y is 1. Let's go put a little dot. Let's actually also make x equal to 0. So if x is 0, then what would y be? So you go put a 0 inside here. So y would be equal to that, which is also 0. So that would be a 0, 0, which is over there. What if x is 2? Okay, then you go plug that in. Well, the absolute value of 2 is just 2. So pretty boring so far. But here's where things start getting interesting. What if x is minus 1? Can you remember what the absolute value of minus 1 becomes? Well, well done if you can remember that the absolute value of minus 1 is positive 1. So if x is minus 1, then the y value would end up being a 1. So that's going to end up going over there. Ah, now we're starting to see where the v comes from. If x is minus 2, then y would be the absolute value of minus 2. I'm just plugging it into this equation. And that's going to keep being a positive. So that's going to go over there. And if you had to keep going, you're just going to get this type of shape. And so if I had to connect everything, I can start to see why absolute values have a v shape. Now, some very interesting things is that this part over here is called the vertex. That's the part where the V is. It's the vertex. So V for vertex. That's nice to remember. But we now need to upgrade our skills a little bit because in a test or a exam situation, you don't have time to just go write out all of these points and to go plot it. So what we're now going to slowly start doing it. Don't worry, I'm not going to rush you. We're going to do it nice and slowly. We're going to learn how to, how to graph these absolute value equations pretty quickly. The next thing we really need to look at now is this type of equation over here. So this is something your teacher might have shown you in class already, but it is so, so, so important. So let me quickly try to show you. So this number in the front, I want you to think of that as the slope. And don't worry, we're going to do lots of examples that's going to help you to see exactly how it works. This part over here, the h, okay? That part there is going to move the vertex left and right. But there's something so weird in maths. When this, for this part over here, if it's a minus, that actually means that it's going to move to the right. And if it's a plus, then it means the graph's going to move to the left. Okay, and I will show you some examples. So this part here is what we, is what going <laughs> to, I'm battling to get my words. It's going to move the graph upwards and downwards. Or it's going to move the vertex up and down. So let's just make some notes. This one move, or moves, or we can say move, doesn't really matter. Move, don't judge me. Move the vertex up and down. But what's nice about this one is it's not weird. Like negative doesn't mean right and positive doesn't mean left. Uh, positive naturally just means up. Negative means down. So it's this one that's weird. Because you would think, be honest, you would think negative means left and positive means right. But it's not. It's the other way around. But with this one, it's nice. Positive means up and negative means down. Now, Another thing I want to add before we start doing some examples is that this number here, um, if that number is a positive, okay, so if that number is positive, then your V is going to be facing upwards like that. If that number is negative, then your V is going to be facing downwards like that. Okay, so you think you have it? Those are the basics that we need to know. Um, so, for example, uh, if, if, if we say y equals to um, 2, x minus 3 plus 1, then where would the vertex be? So, if I draw a little graph. Now, I showed you on the previous slide that the basic vertex always starts at 0, 0. That is, that is the basic absolute value equation. That is our starting position, okay? So that is where the vertex currently is, at 0, 0. Then, try test yourself. What does this do? Well, we said that that parameter there moves us left and right. If it's negative, which it is, it's negative 3, 
So this whole part, sorry, this whole part here is negative three. Um, this whole part here is negative three, so it moves us to the right. So our vertex is gonna go three places to the right. One, two, three. Then this part moves us one place up, so we're gonna go one place up over there, and so that is where our new vertex would be. Okay, now, this number here is a positive, so that means it's gonna be a V that goes like that and like that. You see, it's not that difficult. Let's try another example. Of course, there's more to it. I'm gonna show you how the slope works as well, uh, but I'm just getting you introduced at the moment. So let's just do two more examples. So let me draw a line. Okay, so at the top, let's do y equals to minus three x plus four, take away two. So, okay, let's not do that, that's gonna confuse people. So let's just do this one over here. So we know that the basic vertex is always starts at zero, zero, just like I showed you on this graph over here. This is the most basic graph that you can ever get. Y equals to absolute value X. Hasn't moved up, hasn't moved down, nothing funny has happened over there. So that's where we start. Now, what does X plus four do? Well, that's gonna move us left and right. But what is it gonna do specifically? Well, what we learned is that if it is a positive number, so if it is a positive, then we are going to move to the left. So what I meant was like, if this part here is positive, then we move left. If this part is negative, we move right. So we're gonna go four places to the left. One, two, three, four. So that's where we are. And then we're gonna move two places down. So we're gonna go one, Two. So this is where the new vertex actually is. So let's take away that one. So there's our vertex. Then if we look at this number, it's negative. So we said that if it's negative, then it goes down. The V face, it's like an upside down V. So your graph's gonna do something like that. Now I'm running out of space, but obviously it would keep going, okay? Let's do another example. Y equals to two, X minus one. Let's make it X minus one plus one. So now, if we go and plot this, we know that the vertex normally starts at zero, but let's see what happens. So this here is a minus, so it moves one to the right. Remember, minus means right, so one, there it is. And then one up, so that goes one up, up to here. And so there we are. Now, we look at this number over here. That number is a positive, so it's gonna be a normal type of V. And of course, I'm gonna show you a few more extra little tricks that your teachers may be done as well with this part, but that's just the basics because I know that right now you are probably already feeling better. Well, I hope you are about how to draw these graphs. So now we're gonna really start practicing exactly how to do it. So here we go, here is our first example. So step one, you need to find the vertex. So we know that the vertex always starts at zero, zero. Like we said, that's the most basic absolute value you could ever get. And so then you start with this number. What does that do? So it says plus. So that actually means left, weird, hey? Plus means left, minus means right. So we're gonna go two to the left, so one, two. And then we're gonna go two down, one, two. So there's the vertex. Okay, so that's our vertex. Now I'm gonna show you the proper way to use this number. So we know that it's negative, and, and I also told you earlier that this is, you can think of this as your slope, remember? I did say that, um, I said that that's your slope, and I showed you in the previous slide how to use the slope, like how we used to do it back in the day. So if it's just a minus three, rather write it as minus three over one. So what that means is that your slope is uh, remember the top number is your rise and the bottom number is your run. So we're gonna go three down, one, two, three, and then one to the right. But because it's an absolute value, we're also gonna go one to the left. So you do both. That You'll get used to that now. So we're gonna put a dot there and we're gonna put a dot there. Now I've run out of space, so I can't really show you anymore, but all you do now is you just go connect the dots. Um, so you would go down like that and down like that. We don't even have to worry about the fact that that negative, we know that, we, we learned just now that the negative makes it go down, okay? But we can see that it's already going down. Okay, so here's another example. So step one is just to find the vertex. So we know that the vertex normally starts at zero, zero, but that's only for a very basic absolute value graph. But then we look at this part here, that means left one, you gotta get used to that, so it's one to the left, 
and then four up. So we go one, two, three, four. So there is our vertex at negative one and four. Now we look at the slope. So the slope is three over one. So that means that the rise is three and the run is one. So we go one, two, three up, one to the right, and then also just go one to the left, just because it's an absolute value. I know that part's a bit weird. There we have it. And now you can actually just connect the dots like that and like that. So that's how we do it. Let's do another example. So here, this first step, find the vertex. So this means three to the left. So one, two, three, and then four down. One, two, three, four, and put a dot. There's your vertex. Next step, look at your slope, which is two, negative two. So you can think of it as negative two over one. So that means your rise is negative two and your run is one. So that means two down, one, two, and then go one to the right, one to the left put a dot. And then you just take a straight edge or a ruler and you just connect all of that. Okay, what some teachers would do, and it's absolutely fine, is you take these dots and you just carry on doing it. So you go two down again, one, two, and then uh, to the left, and then two down, and then one to the right. And then it just improves your accuracy. So then you can draw your line through that. And here's our last example. So here we're gonna go four to the left. So one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna go four, uh, four down. One, two, three, four. So we over here at negative four, negative four. Now we look at the slope, which is two over one. So that means that the rise is two and the run is one. So what that means is two up, one to the right. So we go one, two, then go one right, also go one left because it's an absolute value. A little bit weird, I know. And then you can do that again. So you go two up and then one to the left and then two up, one to the right. And then you just connect a line going through all of that. There we go. And there we go. So I hope that by now you feel very comfortable with how to draw absolute value equations.